Welcome back to Programming Like It's 1979. Today we're playing some more of NAND Game, the game loosely based on Neeson and Shokin's course NAND to Tetris. So where we left off, if I bring up the levels, is we have built a bunch of very simple electronic components out of NAND gates. We've built some arithmetic units, we've built some uh, muxes and demuxes, and we've built some memory components, which means now it's time to get to really the heart of the CPU, which is the ALU, or Arithmetic Logic Unit. So NAND game breaks the ALU up into two separate pieces. The first one they call the unary ALU. Uh, I don't believe that Neeson and Shokin subdivide it this far, but let's take a look at the spec. So they're telling us that the unary ALU inverts an input or replaces it with zero. Okay, well let's look at the actual spec over here. A unary ALU modifies a single input X. So here's our input, let's give it a, a nice real number. Two flags select which operations apply. If Z is one, then zero is output instead of the input. If N or negate is one, then the input is inverted. The order is significant, so if both are one, then the output will be the inversion of zero. So Z applies first and then N applies. So what do we know here? Well, without even thinking about how to connect these things together, we know that there's this Z flag, so we're gonna need a Z, the ability to output zero somewhere on our canvas. We know also that we're going to be inverting a number in certain cases if this negate flag is set. So we know that we'll need the ability to invert a number. We know that we might be inverting zero, so I'm just gonna move that up there a little bit just to remind ourselves that the inversion is the last thing that'll happen. Uh, well, let's deal with this is, since the inversion is the last thing that'll happen, if my understanding of the order is correct, let's deal with that now. So it's going to be, there's a few different ways to slice this, isn't there? One way would be to always calculate all of these values since I don't see any memory involved in this circuit, and then only output the one that is being essentially selected for. So the minute we say the word selection or think about it, then we know we should be thinking about a mux or a demux. Uh, in this case, they've given us a little hint in that we don't even have a mux here. We only have a demux. So let's go ahead and take a demux here. We'll probably need two of them, one for each of these selector bits. So let's hook up our negate selector bit first. Okay. And wire that together. So if the negate flag is set, then we're going to be taking whatever was input into our inversion. Uh, and if it's not set, then it's going to be to the rest of our ALU. We don't know what the rest of our ALU looks like just yet. So we'll just leave that there. We do also have our single input X. So if both of these selectors are zero, well, first of all, we know that just as this selector was hooked up to the negate flag, this selector is going to be, see, they've got me doing it, calling these selectors. This DMUX is going to be hooked up to the zero flag. And if both of these flags are zero, then we're told that we're going to be passing X through. So let's take the Z not selected path and hook it up to this. For the Z selected path, we're gonna use this zero here. All right, I hate these little graphical glitches we sometimes see here. Okay, and if N negate is one, then we're going here, which means, again, if negate is zero, then we're not inverting this, correct? X unmodified, which would be that. 
and then this also hooks up to the same place. I'm not positive that this is correct, but it feels right. Let's make sure we're, oh, we've hooked up all the inputs and outputs. It looks like we did. Well, before we hit, I have completed this level. Let's actually do some testing. So we've got 55 decimal. We've got a bunch of bits here. So first of all, if we hit, if both of our flags are zero, we should be passing it through unmodified, which we are. So that's correct. If we toggle the zero flag, we expect the output to become zero, which it does. Um, I need a number here that's easier to invert. Let's see, how about that? Ah, that looks easier. All right, if I flip, click this negate flag, what I expect is all these numbers in the output to become one, except for this is at the eighth bit to become zero. And that sure looks correct to me. And lastly, if both of these are correct, then I expect to see the inversion of zero. And that looks correct to me as well. All right, let's see if we did it right. We did. Congratulations, we've, we've built the Unary ALU. I'm not quite sure why this level exists. Perhaps Neeson and Shokin did have this in Nantetetris and I've simply forgotten it, uh, or perhaps it was introducing this idea of the selection flags. I definitely remember when I first looked at the ALU assignment in Neeson and Shokin, I was a bit taken aback. So let's see if doing that here also takes us aback. So here we have the ALU level, and it does look a little bit more complicated than the Unary ALU. So what are we going to do? Oh, and you know what? I was wrong before. I called this a demux. It is, in fact, a mux. Again, I say this every single episode. I hate that they choose to use the selector and switch nomenclature rather than mux and demux for exactly this reason that I am a bear of small brain and I get confused easily. So what do we have to do here? Well, this time there are six flags, not just two. And there are two inputs x and y. So we have our zx and z and nx flag, which are going to 0x and negate x. And then we have similar flags for y, 0y and negate y. Then we have this f or function selector. If f is 0, then the output is x and y. If f is 1, then the output is x plus y. And then we have this NO, invert output, negate output. The flags can be combined and the specified order is significant. For example, if both ZX and NX is one, then X is inverted zero. Well, that's very similar from our unary ALU example. And in fact, our unary ALU is up here. Now, you could absolutely build this from scratch without using the unary ALU. And as I said, if you want to emulate the NAND to Tetris path, I'd recommend doing that. But in this case, they're, they're clearly giving us a hint that they want us to use these unary ALUs. So let's think about how that's going to work. All right. Well, you know what? Let's, let's actually work a little bit backwards first. Let me get rid of that. Invert output to me suggests that if this NO flag, if this negate output flag is set, we are going to invert whatever else is happening in the rest of our ALU. So let's do that first. We will grab a mux. We will wire it up to the negate output flag. D0, we don't know where that's going to go. That's to the rest of our ALU. But D1 is going to be the inversion of the rest of our ALU. We'll put it up here. All right. So that's ready for input, but we don't know what all is being input into it yet. So what all would be input into it? Well, this F looks very significant. I'm kind of irritated that they're saying the flags can be combined and the specified order is significant, but you'll note there's no, unless I'm missing a scroll bar, and I don't think I am, this is an incomplete spec. 
So again, we're playing a game here, not taking a class. If you were doing the NAND to Tetris course, you would actually have a full spec of what all of the inputs are and what the expected outputs would be, at least for uh, the trivial cases. Uh, I'm going to apply my knowledge of that spec to say that I know for a fact that these flags, the Z, X, and ZY flags, and NY, X, and NY flags, are essentially feeding into this function, and then this function is feeding out. So let's do the function first. Again, we're going to grab a mux. This time we're going to hook the selector up to the F. And then we want two functions, x and y, which is our zero case. We're going to hook, we'll say a is x and b is y, like so. And then we have our selected case. Our one case is x plus y, which is an addition. And that's going to go there, x, y. There's really no way to make these terribly neat, but I'm going to go ahead and do them that way. All right, and that is, yes, I believe that's correct. And once again, we've got a graphical glitch. Okay, fine. I'll move it there. Make it even uglier. God. I'm not going to worry about it. So then we have our ZX, NX, ZY, negate Y. What are we going to do with those? Well, let's take their hint. Let's hook this unary ALU up to all of the X flags. Z to ZX, N to NX, and X to X. Let's get a second one. Z to ZY, N to negate Y, and X to Y here. And that tells us that I've already made a mistake with these two because we don't want to hook these things up to x and y literally we want to hook them up to the outputs of our flags oh i hate this so much all right that's going to go there yeah, i'm just going to do this i don't care that goes up to our x that goes up to our y this goes up to our x our processed x and this goes up to our processed Y. And this one is garbage. All right, well, do I dare, oh, do I dare to actually test this? Let's try it. Let's say this is 128. Uh, you know what, could I do 255? Yeah, that's nice. So that we have that nice pattern of ones and we'll make this a one. Okay. Let's keep all of our flags unset. And with F unset, I expect this to be 256, which it certainly is not because it's not hooked up. See, testing's important, kids. And I've picked values that are terrible. Let's do that. This still looks wrong, doesn't it? I clearly have something that is not hooked up here or some component is not working the way I expect it to, or I've made a grievous error. What have I done wrong? Well, let's again work backwards. Is that hooked up? See, none of these things are changing. Aha, there we go, that's the problem. Our D0 outlet here is not hooked up to anything. Uh, what needs to happen here? That is invert, invert the output. Right, so this needs to be hooked up to select 16. There we go. I think that's correct. That looks much better, doesn't it? Okay, let's make this 255. That looks better. That plus that is that. So now you're getting close to seeing why people say that CPUs work on zeros and ones. It's true in a trivial sense, but you could see that the zeros and ones are structured. So if you view all of these zeros and ones as appearing in one word, 
some parts of those zeros represent numbers. Some parts of those zeros and ones, those essentially destructured into a binary number. Other parts are simply control bits that are going to change how the computer behaves. So since I don't have a spec here, I'm just gonna go ahead and click the completed the level button and we'll see if I got it right. Oh, thank God, I'm not gonna to have to feel embarrassed about this today. That is an ALU in NAND game. The thing I hope you take away from this is simply that breaking the problem down into smaller parts is how you solve this problem and how you solve all of these types of problems. Once again, we have just seven components on screen here. But if we were to actually view this not as having decomposed the problem in steps, but just as a bunch of NAND gates, there's over a thousand NAND gates here. That is too big to fit in anyone's brain, or at least anyone I know. So decomposing the problem, engineering is not just about decomposing problems, but about figuring out how to decompose them such that they are scalable. So here what the game wants you to do is to tell it what patterns of bit what bit patterns correspond to what opcodes. And this is kind of funny because in NAND to Tetris, you get this as input to your solution. You are told this. And here the game wants you to derive all six uh, combinat combinatorial versions of it. Uh, I don't want to do this on screen. I don't want to do this during a Let's Play because it is boring as heck to go through this. I'm going to do the first I don't know, two or three. Hopefully I won't embarrass myself too much. So given some inputs X and Y, how do you get just the X out? Well, we don't want a zero X. We don't want to negate X. We want it unchanged, untouched. We, what we probably want to do, we don't want to end it with anything. Um, we want to add X to zero. It's essentially the operation we can do. So we zero Y, we flip this to add and we don't negate it is that correct that's correct all right y is going to look very similar only this time we're going to zero the x value we're going to change that uh, x and y we want to leave all of them untouched um, i think that's actually all zeros let's go ahead and try that all right there we go so you can go through and do this i feel that of everything in the end game this particular level is the least rewarding. Um, do it if you want to do it. I would personally skip the level. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to uh, suffer through it. I am going to skip this level. And when we come back next time, we're going to work on conditions in our ALU. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you next time on Programming Like It's 1979.